Welcome to our celebration of the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. We especially welcome any guests who are with us today. Out of reverence for this Eucharistic liturgy, we ask that all cell phones and pagers be switched to the off or silent position. Thank you. My name is Cookie Corey, and I will be serving as reader with Matthew Colasho. Our presider today is Father John Dudek. At this Mass, we pray in a special way for Frank Corey. Our gathering hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, can be found in the Gather Hymnal, number 523, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Please stand and join in song as we lift our hearts and voices in praise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. Today we end the octave of Easter, and we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. So brothers and sisters, as we gather together this morning, let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds in order to, pre uh, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose, whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And at this time, I call all the children of the parish to come forward. And as you hear me say often, they are the future of this parish and the future of our church. Go with your teacher and learn more about the word of God. May God be with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed each according to need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter to St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the only begotten by him. But this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world? But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God this is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The spirit is the one that testifies, and the spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. His disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Dominus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my fingers into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, the disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, 
You have come to believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Fear, peace, and blessings. And what do I mean by that? Those are the, some of the key words that we hear in today's gospel. The disciples were gripped with fear, so much so that they were hiding. They were paralyzed. And that's what fear does to people. It paralyzes them. You and I have experienced fear on some level or another. But when it gets to the point that we are unable to do anything, that's when the evil one wins. Jesus showed himself to his disciples. And when he did that, it started to loosen that grip. Jesus' presence helped free them from that fear. I know the story of a young boy who was about seven or eight years old and he was sitting at the dining room table with his family, enjoying a family dinner. And he spilt his milk and he froze. And the milk was running on the table and his father was yelling at him. The little boy wasn't scared about what he had done, but he was scared about his father's reaction. And the more his dad yelled, the more he sat there and did nothing, which intensified his father's anger. And it just sat there and it just dripped on the floor. And that's what living in the past does. It's that sense of fear. It prevents us from living in the present and when we can't live in the present, then we're unable to ever dream about the future. Fear. But then we have peace. Jesus said it three times in the gospel, and we say it every time we celebrate this sacrament. Peace be with you. We share a sign of peace with each other. But it's more than just a greeting. It's so much more than just a greeting. When you have God in your life, you have the sense of peace. When you lean on the church, you have this ability to cope. And when you have the coping ability, then you have a sense of peace that you can achieve anything. You can conquer anything. Life is not easy, but you can overcome it. So peace be with you is God's way of saying a simple greeting, the Jewish greeting of shalom, but it also means I am and will always be with you. Do not fear. And blessings, so many blessings. For 40 days, we... We're in the season of Lent, and we prayed and we gave alms. And then last weekend, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christos Inesti. Christ is risen. And it's all about the blessings that God showers us with day in and day out. Helping us break the bonds of fear. Helping us have that sense of peace in our life. That no matter, no matter what we may be doing, no matter what we may be encountering, no matter how crazy the world can get around us, we're able to be calm and carry on, as the t-shirt says. But then today, we also celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. A young woman in the 1930s, a nun, Sister Maria Faustina. Jesus came to her. He spoke to her. 
and he said, take notes, and she wrote all those notes down in, in notebooks, and then they were compiled, and now it's known as the Diary of St. Faustina. And Jesus specifically said, on the Sunday after Easter, tell the whole world of my infinite divine mercy. Because there is nothing that you and I can think, say, or do that God will not forgive us for. So we are blessed, and more importantly, today, this Sunday, it's reinforced. God wants you to know how much he loves you. God wants you to have his mercy, his forgiveness, his acceptance. He understands your humanity. He knows my humanity. And yet... He still loves us. He still clings to us. And he wants us to know of that love, to know of that acceptance. You and I have not seen. You and I were not there. But you and I are blessed because we believe. And that belief is rooted in faith. You and I are just like Thomas. You and I are just like the disciples. We have experienced a conversion, just like they did. So when we hear this gospel, it's more than just Thomas. It's the disciples letting go of that fear. It's the disciples accepting God's peace. It's the disciples knowing that they are blessed. And they were called, just like you and I, to proclaim his word. So once again, you and I have not seen, but you and I are blessed because we believe. Brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess our faith. It can be found in your hymnals in the inside cover. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us turn our hearts and minds to God as we present to him our prayers and petitions. For the church, that through the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit, we may grow in our trust of the risen Jesus, who offers forgiveness and hope for the future. Let us pray to the Lord. For our local bishop and all bishops, religious and ministers of the church, that they may serve Christ with glad and generous hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of God, that we may heed the message of mercy and by the prayers of St. Faustina, practice works of mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For the new members of our parish community, 
that they will continue to listen to the loving voice of the Good Shepherd as they explore their vocations, accompanied by all the sheepfolds. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and those who suffer, for those who are homeless and for those without employment, that they find the help and consolation of our charity, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, especially Bishop Thomas Gumbleton, Deacon Ronald McIntyre, Richard Hausman, Jeanine Godfroy, and Mary Lou Racine, may they be raised to eternal life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And may everything you do begin with the inspiration of God our Father. Be guided by the Holy Spirit in order to lead you and everyone that you encounter closer to Jesus Christ, his Son. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song of preparation can be found in the hymnal number 524, Alleluia number 1. It's number 524. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, 
to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We make this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion song can be found in the hymnal on number 945, I am the bread of life. It is number 945.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If everyone could have a seat for just a couple short announcements. First, those of you who are on vacation, welcome home. I hope you had enjoyed yourself. Is there anyone in the congregation today that is going to be celebrating a birthday this coming week? Any birthdays? Young man? How old? Eight. Excellente. Young lady? Five. Happy birthday. Beautiful. A lot of fingers pointed, but she's not standing up. Okay. Happy birthday. Anyone over here? Birthdays or anniversary? Birthday, how many? Enough. <laughs> you threw me for a look. You both share the same birthday? Excellent. Day. Or your birthdays are this coming week? They're nodding at me. They're like, move on, Father John, move on. Young man? How, how old? 11. 11. Happy birthday. Anyone celebrating an anniversary this coming week? Anniversary. You again. How many years? 65. Congratulations. Congratulations. What a beautiful testament. I think I missed a birthday in the back. Happy birthday, Mom. Mary. Celebrating her daughter's baptism after Mass this morning. The parish offices will be closed this coming Friday. I believe it's April the 12th. For we will still have 8.30 a.m. Mass and there will still be adoration. The St. Vincent's de Paul Society will have a clothing drive next weekend following all Masses. Please return your donations after the Mass. School is sponsoring a bingo and raffle night on April the 19th from 5.30 p.m. till 8 p.m. Tickets will be on sale soon. And whatever you find yourself doing on this beautiful spring day, make it an enjoyable afternoon. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. found in the hymnal number 520 this is the feast of victory that's number 520 this is
is you're truly a blessing. Ha, ha, ha.